finally deep into the cosmos. <sighs> I just find the space outside of Earth's atmosphere so relaxing. No turmoil, no chaos. And best of all, the IRS would never think to look for me up here. <laughs> just peace and quiet and... Oh. Ah, code Red! Uh, I repeat, we have a Code Red! Code Red! Uh. Oh wait, uh, Code Red is for when my lunch is late. Um, code Orange! Intruder alert! It's the RN aliens from Planet Retrovirity. We need all the help we can get here, so listen up. I need you to know what I know in case... In case something happens to me. Let's get a little closer so I can show you everything you need to remember about these retrovirus interlopers. Now, these guys aren't just any retrovirus aliens. They're HIV ETs. Oh, sorry, I forgot you just joined the force. HIV is short for Human Immunodeficiency Virus, and ET is short for, um, extraterrestrials. HIV is a member of Retrovirity, a family of enveloped viruses with single-stranded, positive-sense RNA genomes. Enva, pause, disco, who the what? Don't worry, we're gonna unpack that a little more. Anytime we're talking genomes and you see orange, think RNA. That's why these RNA aliens are orange. On the flip side, if you happen to see blue, we're dealing with DNA aliens. Hope you're paying attention because this will probably be important later. Uh, times are bleak, but at least the sun is still shining as positively as ever. That's to remind you that HIV's genome is made of positive sense RNA. Recall that positive sense means the virus's RNA genome could be directly translated into viral proteins by host cell ribosomes without going through an RNA intermediate. It's basically messenger RNA. Also note that these orange aliens only have single heads, because HIV's genome is composed of single-stranded RNA. And if you're thinking, well, geez, all these aliens having single heads is pretty boring, <laughs> just you wait. Now, you may have noticed that these orange RNA aliens are enveloped in a spacecraft, and I may just promote you to commander if you spotted the envelope pattern on the side. If you recall, enveloped viruses have a phospholipid bilayer that surrounds their protein capsid and nucleic acid genome. There's more to know about where viral envelopes come from, but I'll save that for the end of our mission. Oh, and did I happen to mention that these RNA aliens always attack in pairs? That's because HIV has a diploid genome, meaning each virus contains two identical copies of positive sense single-stranded RNA. Now that you're familiar with HIV's genome, let's get into its life cycle. The outer wall of the space station represents the cell membrane of our defending host cell. And I get the feeling this invasion is about to heat up, which makes it a great time to meet our protagonist. Our state-of-the-art Helpertron 4000, equipped with the largest four-shaped tool money can buy. This helpful space bot represents helper T lymphocytes, HIV's primary target. Helper T cells, along with a few other white blood cells, have glycoproteins at their surface called CD4 receptors, which is why they're referred to as CD4-positive cells. Even though this bot is usually very helpful against mounting a defense against all types of invaders, the retrovirus alien invader is a very crafty species. So crafty that it's using the four-shaped tool against our bot to get inside the space station. This is a reminder that HIV uses the CD4 receptor to get inside a host cells. To gain entry, glycoproteins embedded in HIV's envelope bind to the CD4 receptor along with a nearby co-receptor, usually CCR5, which you can remember with this Cosmoscraft Receiver 5 sign. Oh no, not the jetway. It's only a matter of time until the aliens dump all their unearthly contents into our craft. All hope is lost. But at least this serves as a good reminder that once HIV attaches to the cell via receptor and co-receptor binding, a special envelope protein changes shape and allows the virus to fuse with the host cell membrane. Once fused, HIV unloads its contents into the host cell cytoplasm. These contents include its genomic RNA, structural proteins, and enzymes. Oh, and speaking of, all the symbols that depict HIV's proteins and enzymes will be the color purple. Purple for protein. 
That brings us to three enzymes that HIV carries that are essential to its life cycle. Reverse transcriptase, integrase, and protease. Reverse transcriptase's job is to transcribe HIV's single-stranded RNA genome into double-stranded DNA. It's represented here by these orange, single-headed RNA aliens being converted to blue, double-headed DNA aliens by the reverse transreplicator these intruders brought along with them. This backwards transcribing, or retro-transcribing, if you will, is the reverse process of normal transcription of DNA to RNA, hence reverse transcriptase and retrovirus. Next comes integrase, an enzyme that integrates the newly formed viral DNA into the host cell genome. Kind of like how this invader is integrating that strange blue wire into the space station's command center. And for an extra reminder of the word integrase, you can think of the in label above this access panel. Integration of viral DNA into the host cell's genome is a pretty smart move on HIV's part. For one, it can't be undone. That host cell and all future generations of it will be infected. Not only does integration guarantee survival of that virus, but this foreign DNA serves as a blueprint, pun very much intended, for synthesizing viral parts and, yeah, new viruses. And the host can't distinguish between its own blueprint and that of HIV. <laughs> So the host cell machinery unwittingly transcribes the viral genome alongside its own, converting viral DNA back into RNA. That's why these space station printers are inadvertently synthesizing a retrovirus RNA alien. These freshly transcribed strands of viral RNA serve two distinct functions. First, they can be used as messenger RNA to create chains of viral polyproteins. Remember, viruses lack the machinery to translate their mRNA into proteins, so they recruit host cell ribosomes to do it for them. You can remember that viral RNA is used to produce polyprotein chains with this messenger RNA alien holding a chain of strange space grenades. <laughs> Hold up. Space grenades? Oh, huh. uh, wait, calm down, everyone. These grenades aren't dangerous while they're all attached to each other. Kind of like how HIV's polyprotein chains are inactive and must be cleaved into smaller proteins to become functional. The second function of the newly transcribed viral RNA is to become the genomes of the next generation of viruses. Remember, each HIV virion contains two identical strands of RNA, hence these two RNA aliens in this new flying saucer. But wait, how did they escape our eukaryotic space station? Well, you see, these two viral RNA strands and the freshly translated polyprotein chains move to the host cell's plasma membrane to bud from the cell as an immature virion. By virion, technically we mean the form of the virus that exists outside of the cell. As you may guess, the process of budding allows the virus to envelope itself in the host cell's plasma membrane, thus making a viral envelope. Remember, the compatibility of the viral envelope and host plasma membrane allowed these guys to weasel their way into the space station in the first place. That explains why these heavily armed RNA aliens are exiting in a ship that clearly used to belong to the space station. And that brings us to the last retrovirus enzyme, protease. After the HIV virion buds from the host cell, protease cleaves the inactive polyproteins into functional viral proteins. I'm talking reverse transcriptase, integrase, structural proteins, regulatory proteins. Pretty much, if HIV was a gym rat, this would be its protein shake. And it's all the proteins needed to make an HIV virion infectious. That means those separated space grenades are fully functional and ready to detonate. Yikes. Uh, on that comforting note, let's take one last look around the space station while it's still unexploded. HIV is a member of retroviridae, a family of enveloped viruses with two identical copies of single-stranded positive-sense RNA. HIV primarily targets helper T cells, but any cell with a CD4 receptor and CCR5 co-receptor is at risk of being infected. HIV uses these two surface proteins on the host cell membrane to attach. 
then fuses its envelope with the cell's plasma membrane to unload its contents in the host cell cytoplasm. Then we covered HIV's life cycle, which requires three essential enzymes, reverse transcriptase, integrase, and protease. Reverse transcriptase transcribes HIV's single-stranded RNA genome into double-stranded DNA, and integrase incorporates this newly synthesized viral DNA into the host cell genome. The host cell machinery then unwittingly transcribes the viral genome alongside its own, converting viral DNA back into RNA. Once viral RNA is transcribed, it can either be used as genomic RNA for the next generation of viruses, or translated into long inactive polyproteins by host cell ribosomes. The genomic RNA in polyproteins then exit the host cell, taking a piece of the cell's plasma membrane for the viral envelope. Once the immature virion is outside the cell, protease cleaves the inactive polyprotein chain into functional viral proteins. At this point, the virion is considered mature, and it can go on to infect new host cells, and the life cycle starts all over again. <sighs> all right, well, this mission didn't exactly go as planned, but it's really not so bad. Hey there. What's your, what's your name tag say? I don't know if I can pronounce that properly, but, um, greetings. Nice to meet you, buddy. Uh, hey, hey, whoa, wait a minute. What's, what's that you have in your head?